Hello to you, fellow being. Infinite Spiral here, and boy, it, it's been a while, huh? Remember that time I said there wouldn't be any more, you know, month-long waits between episodes? <laughs> I know, fuck me, right? Well, we'll get to that in a minute. For now, we need to get back to the business at hand. So, when we last left off, we had come to Duna with this du uh, Dunatic ship. Right here. It was bigger then. There were, there were other layers that came off, obviously. And uh, we detached a satellite and then landed on Duna. Took a whole crap load of science, just everything possible. And, you know, we're here in orbit again. And the satellite that we dropped off then orbited and took a bunch of temperature scans all over the place around Duna. Uh, finally concluding by crashing into the planet to get one final temperature scan that was just too low to do anything about otherwise. And here we are. We just need to bring this ship back to Duna. And this mission will finally be over. <laughs> After a few months. <laughs> I know, what a shitty place to leave off, right? Fuck me. What an asshole. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and set up a maneuver to bring this thing back to Kerbin. So I'll rejoin you on the other side of that. Okay, so we've got this maneuver set up four minutes from now. Um, I'm not sure if I should be burning already, necessarily, but uh, yeah, it's not perfect. But it gets us into a nice equatorial encounter with Kerbin. Not too close to the atmosphere, because uh, I don't really want to come in with that much velocity and have to risk burning up. And we're going to have lots of fuel and the ability to slow ourselves down just with our engines. No problem. So I think I'm good with that. And I'm just going to go ahead and point at the target node and test out these engines just with a full throttle burn real quick just to find out what kind of a burn time we're looking at. It's probably not that extreme, but I think it's probably going to go through all of what we have on this stage and move into the next. So, yeah, that's going to affect our burn time, obviously. Okay, uh, 14 seconds? Seriously? <laughs> okay, maybe we'll be able to do it on this. We'll see. Uh, but whatever the case, once that's burned through, then we can move on to this stage, which is a poodle engine, I believe. Yes, a poodle engine attached to this fuel tank here. And that's the end of our engines. After that, I, for the first time ever, I actually put an ablative shield in here. <laughs> so when we get to the re-entry portion, we're actually going to be trying to, you know, re-enter atmosphere without any engines and just orienting ourselves that way to try and reduce the amount of temperature that this uh, Science Junior pod takes because that thing is sort of fragile and I'm not a fan of that. But anyway, let's go ahead and fast forward to this burn. Okay, so we didn't have quite enough in that stage to finish it, but we got most of the way there, and we'll obviously have to readjust once this burn is finished, because that adjusted burn time is going to alter where we're coming in. So that was the plan, but what is actually happening is... Uh, this, <laughs> I guess. Oh, we've got a carbon encounter up here. Interesting. So let us just go ahead and delete that maneuver. And I'm going to go ahead and mess around a little bit to try and get this closer to the original plan. Be with you in a moment. Okay, so a negligible burn in this direction. We'll just go ahead and do that now. And delete and look at what we've done. Good enough. In fact, I'm going to push it just, just a tiny, tiny bit further in the opposite direction. <laughs> Oops. <clears throat> wow, that is sensitive. But uh, yeah, so it's it's been a couple of months, actually, since I've recorded. And uh, a tiny bit rusty. No big deal. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I want to explain, you know, why it's been such a long wait between episodes. I know I said that there wouldn't be these kinds of waits, but the situation, if you've been following along, it was that uh, I had just moved and needed to find work. And I 
just prioritized finding work over putting out videos, which, you know, I, I think it's the responsible thing. <laughs> um, you know, as, as much as I didn't want to have to leave everyone in the dark on what was going on here, I was sort of wrestling between that and the very real need to pay rent and buy groceries. So when you're thinking about those kinds of things, it's hard to justify sitting down to make a video and make that feel like I'm being productive. So, uh, yeah, but now I'm making a video, so clearly I must have a job, right? Well, that's right. I certainly do. So, uh, we should be back on track now. And I wanted to talk about some plans for this channel, because, <clears throat> as you know if you've been following along, I've basically only been playing this game for quite a while now, and I never had any intention of being a one-game channel. I mean, you know, when I first started, I was on some, you know, Nintendo NES games, and then I played Portal on, uh, or Portal 2 on Xbox 360. And yeah, I, I'd like to get back into more console gaming. I'm, I've fallen really, really far behind on console games in general. Not even just console games, just all games. Uh, I fell behind a really long time ago, and I've sort of been trying to catch up. And, uh, you know, <laughs> with that in mind, I actually played through Bioshock 1 and Bioshock Infinite just this year for the first time. They're fantastic games, I really loved them. But, uh, I, I don't know if I should bother trying to, you know, make series, make videos out of those older games. I don't think there's a lot of interest there. Uh, that's, you know, more for my own benefit, just actually catching up and having those shared experiences that sort of profoundly influenced so many gamers. And, uh, yeah, so that's, that's an idea there. If, uh, I would like some feedback. If you think you'd be interested in that, um, you know, feel free to leave a comment about it, but I just, I, I get the feeling there's not a whole lot of interest in seeing older games. You know, most, most YouTubers and, uh, Let's players in general, they, they play new games, and there's a reason for that. <laughs> it's what people want to see, so with that in mind, I will be playing more new games for sure. Definitely going to be making some new series once I've got, you know, some paychecks and actually buy myself a, a modern console. I'm still stuck on a 360 for now, but I will be purchasing an Xbox One or X-Bone, however you want to call it, and uh... Yeah, so I'll be playing some newer, more interesting games. Uh, I shouldn't say more interesting. This game is pretty fascinating. But, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to sort of widen out my diversity a bit. And, uh, yeah, that's that's sort of the plan going into the future. So let's get this ship back to Duna. I mean, Kerbin. Alright, so here we are in Kerbin's Influence. I probably should have done this earlier, but I didn't think of it until now. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and set up the maneuver for turning this into an orbit and find out just how much of a burn this is going to be. Okay, so it's a minute and a half long burn, and that, uh, <laughs> that sort of worries me a little bit. I don't know that we have that in our fuel tank because I wasn't paying full attention to how long we burned before. And we went through, uh, I don't know, it was like a sixth, I guess a fifth or a sixth of our fuel. Uh, I think, <laughs> I think I'm going to quick save and test this out. Uh, quick save, okay. And I guess we just, yeah. <laughs> Warp to next maneuver. Okay, and we are one minute away, we need to start burning. Oh, let's get pointed at that target node, okay, and at, well, now, <laughs> we should have been burning a couple seconds earlier than that, but, uh, yeah, another thing that I am going to be working towards is trying to get these episode lengths down, so this episode will probably be pretty strong in that area, because, um, I, I mean, a bunch of these episodes have been, you know, like an hour long, and... As much as some of you might enjoy that, it seems like the vast majority of viewers uh, drop off pretty quickly after 15 to 20 minutes. So that's, I mean, that's the reason that most people make their videos that length. And 
honestly, there's not a lot of value in having this super long video with, you know, 40 more minutes that's only being enjoyed by 20 people at most. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's nice for those 20 people, but I can't be trying to please a very small minority that doesn't really lend itself very well towards, you know, pr productive channel growth. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll be making an effort in that way. And I don't know if that's going to mean a lot more fast forwarding or if it's going to be just less things accomplished in an episode. I think that's probably going to be a big part of it because most of what makes my episode so long has been just the ridiculous number of things I try to pull off every, every single launch, every mission. So <laughs> things might be simplified more or just broken up into more chunks. We will see, but for now I'm going to warp out to Apoapsis, bring our Periapsis down, and just arrow break our way in, and uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes. I'm, I don't fully trust the Ablative Shield to give us the protection we need, so I'd like to try and also slow, us, slow ourselves down more with the engine. So actually, I'm going to do a little more retro burning here at the Periapsis to bring the Apoapsis down, just to cancel out more of our momentum so that's what's going on there but yeah once I've slowed down this and warped out here brought the periapsis down and started the arrow breaking I will rejoin you then uh oh uh <laughs> no shit all right well Guess I shouldn't have slowed down at the periapsis. <laughs> Didn't have enough fuel to get ourselves down to atmosphere. Ah, shit. Okay, what's going on here? We have no other ways of propelling ourselves, so... Lesson learned, back to the quick load. But at least we know that we do have enough to actually turn this into an orbit and bring it down. Pretty sure there's enough fuel to actually bring it suborbital. Or at least, you know, sub-atmospheric. So, uh, yeah, I'll rejoin you on the other side of all that stuff that we just did already once. Alright, well, let's pack up these panels and get down to the surface of Kerbin. Finally finish this mission. <laughs> also, I feel I should mention, it should be pretty obvious that uh, if I moved, then I must be in a new house, but this is my first time recording in the new house, and uh, yeah, I don't know how the sound quality is going to be. I'm in sort of a completely different atmosphere. I used to be recording in just a tiny, tiny little closet <laughs> with a blanket draped over a doorway that sort of absorbed more sound, but the floors were wood there, and uh, here they actually have carpet, but I'm also in a larger room, so I don't know if the acoustics are going to be better or worse or basically the same. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to find out. But, uh, yeah, I, I try to pay pretty close attention to my sound quality. I think that's pretty important. All right. Well, that is the end of that. Let's just pop this stage off. And let's check our periapsis to make sure we're still suborbital. Okay, good. Or sub-atmospheric, I suppose. And let's drop that maneuver. That was just a way for me to know how close I was to the periapsis. And, uh, yeah, we'll definitely keep this thing pointing retrograde so that that ablative shield is always pointing into the force that's going to hit us. Which is to say the virtual atoms of the atmosphere. And the burn has begun. So there's not going to be a whole lot going on during this. I will go ahead and rejoin you when we are on the ground. Provided there is no disaster. <laughs> Right, that is a safe and successful splashdown in the ocean. I am very pleased with the design of this ship. Now, I, having never worked with ablative shields before, the heat shields, um, I don't know if this is normal or if I just got extremely lucky, but I, I ended up with 1.2 <laughs> left on it. <laughs> I don't know if, yeah, it, it, I don't even know what happens when that depletes. Does it explode? Does it break everything it's attached to? Or does it just, you know stop breaking off and start transferring heat. I, I don't know, but uh, we're, we're done. We're gonna go ahead and recover the vessel and gather the science 1334.
Oh, beautiful. I actually kind of expected it to be a little bit more than that, but that's okay. I'm not complaining. 45 grand in funds. Not a big deal. Oh, just from parts, yeah. The missions, where, where all the money came from. Yeah, we've got 4.7 mil. Ooh, very nice. And 5 XP for Jeb. I don't think he needs it. Pretty sure he's maxed out, but... Uh, there we go. Data from the surface of Duna. Finished. Beautiful. So... That's going to conclude this episode. I, yeah, again, I, I apologize. I am very sorry for that just enormous wait between episodes, but, you know, sometimes real life just kind of gets in the way. So I appreciate you taking the time to watch this. I'm Infinite Spiral. This is Kerbal Space Program, and we will see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.